Um, we've been talking about chemical reactions, and what I want to do is to do a model of a chemical reaction today. Um, and while we're doing this reaction, if you will, what I'd like to do is kind of stop the reaction temporarily and record some data about that reaction, okay? This reaction is called a synthesis reaction. Does anybody know what a synthesis reaction means? Noah? Creating a new product. Creating a new product, that's exactly right. How is that different from, say, a displacement reaction, which also creates a new product? How is that different? We're creating a new product. How is that different? No, you already answered one, so I'm going to ask somebody else. Thank you. Caitlin? Uh, displacement is how we just switch the uh, comments around and form something new instead of like getting rid of something new. Okay, good. A displacement reaction is where you switch the elements around to make something new instead of just completely making something new. So in this particular model that we're going to use, you have in your cool whip container, you have uh, two different color beads, pot beads. In my case, I have a purple pot bead and a yellow pot bead, and they're hard to see, but this is what you have, okay? So the purple represents element one, and the yellow represents element two, in my case. You need to now decide which one's going to be element one and which one's going to be element two, okay? Go ahead and fill that in in your table and in the steps in the directions. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to let purple, which represents element one, and yellow, which represents element two, we're going to bond them by linking them together. If you can, my fingers are, there you go. And you now have a molecule that we'll call PY, made of purple and yellow. Do you guys understand? So first thing I want to do is I want to talk about some of the observations that you all made, okay? Um, who remembers what the first observation was that we talked about just a few minutes ago? Does anybody remember what that was? What was that, Kelsey? Um, number of unreacted plus the number of molecules is 50. Okay, so the number of unreacted plus your number of molecules works out to be 50. Okay, very good. All right, so what other observations did you make while you, are, while you all were uh, combining atoms? So we'll start with Cassie. What did your group decide as, was uh, a comment that you can share with us? Um, it got harder to get a pair each time. It got harder to get a pair each time. A pair of uh, single atoms, I think, is what you mean. Is that right? Did you all notice that same thing, that it got harder to get a pair of um, atoms that you were supposed to put together each time, each time interval? Um, is there any group that didn't notice that? Okay, so I want you to consider this in terms of the model. Why, what could explain that observation? What might, un, what might help us to understand that reasoning in terms of the model, not in terms of chemical reactions? Do I have a volunteer for that? Seth, say it aloud. There's an increase of molecules, so it'd be like you keep pulling molecules instead of uh, just the individual atoms. Okay. Or the different color or individual colors instead of like the together ones. Okay, so there's an increase in your number of molecules. So, um, it, say it again, I'm sorry. I got <clears> lost. <throat> it, like the number of individual um, particles decrease because of the increased molecules. So it would be harder to pull them. Okay, so what he said was, there were, um, the number of individual particles were decreasing because there were more molecules being made, so it got harder to pull them. Do you agree with that, with that statement? Does that make sense to you? Does anybody have a comment about that statement? Do you agree? All right, now I want you to put this in terms of chemical reactions, okay, in the vocabulary that we use for chemical reactions. In terms of what Seth said, try to say the say, same thing, but in terms of chemistry. Nick? As, the, as more products increase, the available reactants decrease. Do you agree with that? Okay, now in terms of picking up, grabbing out the particles, 
that represents something that's happening in chemicals, between chemicals during a chemical reaction. What do you think picking those two particles up represents? And I don't necessarily want an answer to that right now, but I want you to think through that while you guys are making your graphs and doing some other things, okay? Do we have any other observations that were made? Lydia? We didn't get a full, like, 50 molecules. We didn't get through all 50 molecules. Did you guys, was there any group that got through, fi that made 50 molecules? Was there any group? Huh. I wonder why that is. Can anybody explain that in terms of the, of the um, model that we had? Okay. We don't have to explain it right now, but that can be a, a question that we come back to in just a few minutes. Okay. So while you're creating your graphs, I want you to think about those two things. We didn't make all 50 molecules. Did we have leftover atoms? So did we have any unreacted atoms? Okay, so why didn't we make all of the molecules if we had leftovers? And then I also want you thinking in terms of a chemical reaction, how those observations, Seth's observations and Lydia's observations, relate to a real chemical reaction, okay? Everybody turn to page two. You are to be graphing these on the same set of axes, the same uh, coordinate plane. So along the x-axis, you're going to do time, and along the y-axis, you're going to plot number of particles, okay? So um, I want you to plot the number of unreacted color one, and then draw a line or a curve that best fits that, in other words, a trend line. Then I want you to do unreacted color two and do a trend line, and then I want you to do molecules that were formed and do a trend line. So you should have three different sets of data plotted on one graph. Also make a legend. Okay, does anyone have a question? Okay, go. If you need colored pencils, I have more up here. So if you don't have any of them in your box. Are they? Yeah. Why would they be the same? Because they have, because they they have to take one of each to make a molecule. So then one of each gets taken out. So they're going to be the same throughout every time. Because the same numbers. Yeah, because if you take one out of you take one out of each to make a molecule, so then it goes down by one of each. So does that make sense to all of you? Yeah. So you just put the. But well, I don't understand why we have to graph. We don't have to graph three lines since they're the same, right? Right. You don't have to graph both of them since they're the same. But when you make your model. So do you want us to do like do it in like a specific color? Or can we just make a line? You can just make a line and you can mark what it is, but you need to indicate what each one represents. Yeah. So to answer your question, yeah. Joey, what do you think? They wouldn't be. Can you give an example, either in the model or in chemistry, either one, where they wouldn't necessarily be the same? Okay. I'll defer. Can anybody give an example where they might not necessarily? Karsten? Um, like if they don't start with the same number of particles. Okay, if they don't start with the same number of particles. When you have a chemical reaction, when I've done my demonstrations, how carefully do I measure things out? Do I very carefully or do I just combine some stuff? Very carefully. <laughs> Did you see me put the baking soda in the balloon the other day? Oh, you just I just scooped. Okay, I just scooped, right? I didn't carefully measure. So do I have the same number of particles in, in both cases? Okay, so there's something to think about. There are other instances where it might not be the same. Can anybody come up with one of those? Another reason or explanation, Nicholas? Okay, can you give an example of a of a reaction in which you have an odd number of atoms to make a certain molecule? Uh, carbon, dioxide. carbon dioxide. How many carbon atoms do we start with? Do we need for the reaction? I guess I should say, how many carbon atoms do we need for the reaction? One. And how many oxygen atoms do we need for the reaction? So if our, if our, um, if our model, if we started with equal quantities of them, so if I had 50 and 50 CO, C's and O's, what would happen to the two lines if I were to graph those? What, how would they look? If you were to graph the first one, which represented your C's, and then you were to graph the second one, which represented your O's, how would that look, Emily? Uh, 
the oxygen would be decreasing faster. Do you agree with that? 